guys, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to learn how to make a ramen bomb like a professional. <laughs> uh, so ramen bombs are actually one of my favorite, absolute favorite meals on, the, on, the, on a trail. Um, it's my favorite for a few reasons. First of all, they're freaking delicious. They require only a few ingredients and we're going to, we're actually going to make a ramen bomb here in real time for you on camera. Now I've actually been simulating trail conditions today. I haven't eaten all day. So it's about 8 p.m. right now, and I actually haven't eaten, so I'm, I'm actually starving. I'm literally, I'm ravenous. So I, I'm actually bringing out a little, I'm actually bringing out a little treat for myself tonight. So in addition to the normal ingredients in a ramen bomb, you got your instant mash and you got your ramen noodles, and we'll go over those in just a moment. I'm also going to be adding a little bit of Spam and an egg. But, you know, we, you don't have to get gourmet on the trail. But you could have spam on a trail, so that's definitely doable. An egg might be harder to come by, but you never know. You might find like a, a grouse egg or a, a, a bird egg in, in the woods, and then you want to throw that in your ramen bomb. Uh, so Wait, there's... How, how many times have you found a bird egg in the woods? <laughs> uh, I don't think I've ever found one. But you never know. And then the other thing about ramen noodles, dude, the other thing about ramen bombs, they're fun. You, you want to have fun with a ramen bomb, you know? So you, get, you definitely want to want to take your base ingredients, your, your water, your instant, your dehydrated mashed potatoes. Idaho brand would be the best because Idaho makes the best potatoes in the world, obviously. And then uh, you, you're gonna want your ramen noodles. But in addition to those, you might find wild onions. You might find morels. You might find uh, other veg ve edible vegetation around. Trout. Trout, perhaps, if you can find trout, for sure. Um, and then what you're gonna wanna do is just throw that in there, boil it up in the water, and then, and then eat it. Now another, actually, I should grab the peanut butter. Because the peanut butter is another good hack. Let me, let me just real quick grab the peanut butter, actually. Oh, yeah. oh, this is the brand, too. This is the brand. And if you're going to go peanut butter, I mean, on the trail, you know, you got to keep it cheap. And you want to keep it probably to plastic bottles. But at home, we, we, you know, we have a little more, we have a higher scale of food. So we're going with an all-natural peanut butter. This stuff is fantastic. And adding peanut butter to ramen is excellent because you want all the oil. That oil is going to be calories. And actually, a lot of times when you add peanut butter to ramen, it has like a pad thai flavor. So that's a little pro tip for you there. Peanut butter. I don't think I'll be doing peanut butter. I'll probably do peanut butter tonight too. Okay, so when you're dealing with ramen noodles, the, the most common way to get ramen noodles would actually be just to buy one of these pre-packed uh, ramen. Maruchan ramen uh, and, and Top Ramen are two of the more popular brands, but... But really, you can just buy the noodles packaged by themselves for a much cheaper. These are actually only about 20 to 25 cents a pack usually, unless they're marked up in some small town. But, but you can actually get the cost well below 20 cents a pack uh, if you just buy your own noodles. What's nice about this is they also pre-package it with a little bit of flavor and you get a little variety. The, the, the portion size is already out there for you. For a 20 cents a piece, I mean, it's not, a, not too bad. Um, do I have a preference between Maruchin or Top Ramen? Not really. I don't really notice much of a difference there. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you're paying, you're getting what you're getting. Um, there are higher quality ramens out there that have like oil and stuff in them. But what I would recommend doing on a trail, especially if you can have a little bit of oil with you. Hang on. Yeah. Oil, the, the importance of oil, oil is flavor. I mean, that's what it is. Your body craves oil. Your, your body craves is craving calories, especially if you're on a, pr a prolonged hike where you're going to be eating something like this. Um, you're in a calorie deficit and, and you're, you'll just, this is nourishing. Like when you have the calories in your body, it, fe it just feels good, you know? So I would always recommend bringing maybe a little coconut oil out there with you or a little bit of maybe a smaller container of oil. And, but that's really kind of where the peanut butter comes in too. You want to add... You really want to add an, a, a, an oily base to it because that's really going to increase the flavor of that ramen. Uh, but no real preference on, on the top ramen or maruchin. Uh, I will say uh, you, got, you got your pork flavor. Your pork flavor is going to be one of your most your classic standard flavors aside from the chicken. I, didn't, I did not include chicken flavor on here because I don't like eating chicken soup on the trail. It's weird to, to mix it with ramen. I don't like the flavor of the chicken with the ramen. But... The pork flavor is classic. Now I will say there are two other classic, well you got your beef. Uh, Top Ramen calls it beef, Maruchin calls it roast beef. I prefer the roast beef marketing, so I, I tend to prefer the roast beef. Um, but they're both, you know, comparable. Now shrimp, 
shrimp something special because you know like, I don't really think I'd like shrimp flavor. No, the shrimp flavor is fantastic out there. And this one goes especially well with any trout that you might be catching out there. So the shrimp, I, I like that one. Now soy sauce, I'm, it's a mixed bag for me because while the flavor is good, it's good. It's popular. It used to be called oriental flavor, but I think that's a little bit politically incorrect. But when it was oriental, I just think it had a richer gingery flavor to it. The soy sauce is still fine. I kind of eat it for nostalgia, but I have mixed feelings about that. What Now, what are we going to do today? I haven't really decided which one I'm going to go with. Uh, I was going to just do a little ramen lottery and just see what, I, what comes up. So I'm just going to take these real quick and um, we'll just kind of go like this. And I guess we're going to go with the uh, pork flavor today. <laughs> so we'll go with the pork. Okay. Uh, oh, by the way, we are broadcasting this from the Wild West Trail World Headquarters. Uh, we are in the process of getting tours, so <laughs> let, let us know. So pork ramen. Now, this is going to be in real time, like we said. So let's roll up your sleeves. Uh, the pot, you want your cooking pot. This is anodized aluminum. Uh, we like the anodized aluminum because it's it's lightweight, it's strong, and um, you know it's, uh, it's it's just a great tool to have. The anodized aluminum, L lightweight, lighter than steel or cast iron. So let's let's get things heated up over here, will we? All right, shall we? All right, <laughs> that's too much. Okay, so we're gonna put the stove on the isobutane here. It's very simple. And really, there's no preference. These things are cheap. You can get one of these for 10 bucks on Amazon. But people, you can spend a lot more on them too. You can spend 30, 80. Okay. Make sure it's off. You, you know what? I gotta make in. sure. It's, that's actually great that we did that. Make sure it's off when you screw it on. Oh, it smells like fucking butane in here. Actually, the butane doesn't have a natural smell. They add that they in the factory. Oh, that's great. So you know that it's actually leaking. makes sense. Yeah. I'm glad they do that. Okay, that's that works. Um, and then what we're going to do, now I, ha I have here a Nalgene bottle. This is going to be, this is pretty standard on the trail. These things are, they're BPA free, but that's a whole other thing. But um, basically they, they're liter water bottles that hold, that hold liquid for you. So this is, uh, this is the Nalgene. I found this actually on the trail, on the Wild West Trail in uh, Montana, down, uh, yeah, down in Montana. So this was actually a nice little find. I just lost my, my Nalgene as well. So the, 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 the mountain and the trail, it, it, she takes, but she gives. And uh, this day I worked out. I walked out with this. So I'm gonna probably. If this is a liter. I'm probably gonna put about a half a liter of water in here, uh, just to kind of get it, get things going. You can always add. You can always add more. The thing about I will say this about when making ramen bombs, uh, it, it it can escalate to a lot of food quickly. So the uh, the instant mash really expand, and so do the noodles. So you really. Less is more because these, this is calorie dense and you don't want to be wasting food on the trail. You have to eat whatever you make. That's the rule. All right, so let's get things going. Open up those arms. First, we got to open up these arms on the, uh, the old. Uh, this, for the record, this isn't my stove, so I'm not. But it doesn't matter, you know. It's pretty universal. There we go. There's only, there's only two. Oh, so yeah, this one's actually rusted shut. That's actually great. Okay, so here we go, guys. A little, little magic for the camera. Get the gas, get the gas going. Get your trusty uh, flint and steel over here. Let me just tell you why I'm doing the spam thing. A, I'm hungry. I, I am really hungry, and we have a bunch of supplies right now because there's an event happening. I'm not going to talk about it, but we have been stocking up on supplies, so I figured I'd take this out of the pantry. I just chopped up that spam and put it in the pan. It honestly looks nasty. It, it looks disgusting. Um, we'll see how it goes. And, and actually, another thing, now that I put the spam in there, I remember that's a lot of spam in that can, and when I, when I was on the trail, I remember it was even too much for me to eat on the trail. It was like a lot of, it was a lot of spam. So there's really, keep that in mind if you're going to go the spam route. All right, so, Magica TV, got a little spam right over here. All right, and, uh... This is just about ready to go. We actually had to slow it down. This boils up real quick. And I actually put a little more water in there and then I filled this up so you wouldn't know. But I did put more water in there because we got a lot of spam and we have a lot of ramen bomb deluxe to eat tonight. All right, so this is just about the boil and um, that's the exciting part. What we're gonna wanna do here is 
once this hits, and honestly, you can put this in before the boil. If you're actually crunched for time, which you probably are on a hike, you can put this in even before it's boiling and then just get yourself a head start time. All right, so here we go. We are boiling here. I'm going to lower the temperature a little bit. Oh, yeah, we are boiling, boys. That's how you boil water. And we're just going to throw a little, little bit of our ramen in there. We don't want to waste anything. Waste not, want not. Uh, on the trail, I always made sure I had one little mini seasoning. Um, something, like, something like this, the weight is pretty nominal. Black pepper important. I, they had a nice chipotle garlic. But just to have some type of flavor to throw into literally all of your food, it will make all the difference. Um, so two other things. This is some spoons over here. This is like a lightweight hiking spoon, but it's made out of plastic. And honestly, I don't have much confidence in this. I wouldn't actually use this. What if, I mean, can, does the plastic melt? So I, I, that's trash. I will be using a metal spoon. And uh, they sell hiking metal spoons that are like titanium, um, lightweight. Stay away from the spork. Sporks really don't make much sense. You're better off going with either a, a fork or a spoon. I think go with the go with the spoon, right? You gotta go spoon. Yeah. Well, you can get every crack of the. Pan and and, and the, the problem with a spork, you lose surface area. You can't get as much liquid in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Right. I think go with the spoon. There's a reason why no one uses sporks in the real world. Yeah, sporks don't make sense. Good idea though, perhaps. On paper, like on communism. paper. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't work in the real world. All right, so here we go. And honestly, and this has been there for what, about a minute or two? It's starting to already, and it really it's all your consistency. If you want a little al dente, cook it less time. Um, but we are basically almost there. And then uh, right at the end here, we are going to put our pork flavor in. Our pork flavor. Now, I think there's real bone marrow in this, which I think gives it a richer flavor. I could be wrong about that. The beef one. The beef one has the bone marrow? Mm. Yeah, well... In any case, and uh, you always want to work up an appetite. Generally, on on trail, you're going to be hungry, but if you're not hungry and you need something to help, kind of help get the uh, get the old hunger going, we do sell the Trailblazer. It it it's fantastic. It just gets you in the mood, gets you ready to eat, and um, and that's all I'll say at the moment. But please, if you like to support the trail, definitely pick one of those up. They are such high quality. Oh yeah, this is, this, this is, I mean, this is ramen here. This is good. This is looking nice. So I'm going to cut this off. Actually, that's right about where I like it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now that's, that's a bowl of noodles and uh, not much to, to look at, but watch what we do here. This is the fun part guys. Well, the fun part's eating it, but this is also kind of fun. Oh, they throw in that pork flavor. You throw that pork flavor in there. Oh yeah, maybe give it a little mix. Oh yeah, you can smell it. <sighs> Whoo! I don't know. There might be there might be uh, bone marrow in there. There's some real rich flavor. I'll tell you what, that that's a good flavor, the pork. And then this, now we're just gonna throw in our de our dehydrated potatoes and basically do it to consistency. So I like to throw a little in. <laughs> I like to throw a little bit in there, <laughs> kind of mix it up and see how much you got. And remember, this is going to expand as it, uh, as it soaks. So you, you, the, the risk you run of putting too much in, it starts to dry it out. You, nobody likes dry mashed potatoes. This is actually looking pretty decent. I'm going to add a little bit more here and I'm also going to add a little bit of oil. Just a little bit of oil to add some flavor here. Now, the thing is too, that spam is going to have a lot of fat. So that's really going to add something as well. And we're gonna throw a little more of these instant mash in here, just to kind of get that going. And here we go. It looks pretty decent actually. It's starting to look pretty good. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then a little bit of meat. Now, yeah, a little bit of meat, a little treat. Well, that looks fantastic. We'll throw that egg in there too. That, that egg. Get in there. Yeah. All right. Now look at that. That's that. I'll tell you right now. Is there a little seasoning in there? A little more seasoning there. You can never, and honestly, you can never have too much seasoning. You want to go over season in this stuff. And um, oh god, I gotta be honest with you. This is looking pretty good. <laughs> this is looking pretty good, guys. Hey, are you guys hungry? You want to try a little bit of this? All right, here we go. I'll tell you right now. That's that's a nice consistency right here. That's a nice consistency. But I could even see going a little thicker. But that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. And that's going to be pretty darn filling. I, I couldn't even eat. I bet you I couldn't eat this whole bowl right here. 
Well, maybe. We'll see. All right. Well, the final thing, we'll have to do a taste test. I'll have to try it out and see how it is. Let's try it out here, guys. Let's see what we got. A little hot. You want to get a little spam. Definitely get a little egg in there. I'll be honest with you, that's delicious. That is a ramen bomb. Wow. The oil, the spam. Yeah, this is delicious. I tell you right now, it holds up. This holds up, guys. Well, guys, uh, thank you for joining me. Thanks for joining me today. With my, that's weird. By itself, it's weird. Yeah. Uh -huh. But thank you for joining us today at the Wild West Trail and learning how to make a ramen bomb. I hope you will try this. I hope you will be as excited about this meal as I am because uh, honestly, a ramen bomb, especially on a trail, is really hard to beat, guys. And remember, if you like our video, please share, please subscribe. It really makes a difference for us. Uh, but thanks again and bon appetit. That's fucking, that sticks to your ribs, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>